All right, guys, so we're here at the GG Network Media Room, uh, powered by MSI and Mountain Dew. Uh, we're with who? Um, Gene Gacho from Secret Six. From Secret Six, and you have Project Zandata. We played it. We also played it last year. Uh, what do we have now for 2017 with the new build of Project Zandata? Um, coming from uh, yung last year's last year's build, uh, last year was very rough. Uh, it was made like by five, five people lang siguro. Oh, okay. Pero with, uh, with the attention na nakuha namin sa ano sa with uh, yung good reception na nakuha namin dun sa last year tsaka sa PGF, medyo up to like 25 na tayo yung team namin ngayon. So we managed to put in a lot more art. Uh, so it looks very very different, very very different now. Mas polished na yung ano, um, graphics, animations. We have new weapons, new classes, and new game modes. So um, I could go into the, each of them uh, separately. Yeah, Pero, right. Um, I guess uh, I guess I can start with the uh, young classes. So last year we only had the, we showcased the marksman because um, we were uh, parang debut ne. So uh, we wanted to uh, know, uh, show something accessible. About not, nothing too weird, muna. Na, People who have been playing ano, Counter Strike, Call of Duty, you know, other first person shooter games can easily jump into. So, uh, the marksman made the most sense because it's all about yung gunplay and you know, stuff like that. So, um, afterwards, a lot of people really liked the design because in the studio, yung, yung art direction of ano, the stealth class. So, for PGF, we added in the agent. Right. Um, so, that is more, ano, uh, more for people who like uh, trickery and cunning. So, the skill sets niya, it's all about invisibility, illusions, and, and you know, teleports. So uh, uh, really rewards more on map knowledge than your aim, because and um, more on talagang ano siya, flanker and team base. Uh, yeah, 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 team base naman yung game. Eh. So uh, ayun, um, So for for you know, for the floor show now, uh, we have the juggernaut, and um, as opposed to the marksman, that rewards precision. The juggernaut, it's more on brute force talaga. Um, it's explosions and melee attacks. So, uh, so I like to say, I, like, I could say that, like for example, the marksman is like the for me. It sounds like it's the middle of the two. Yeah. The agent is the lighter version, uh -huh. and then the juggernaut is the heavy duty one. Yeah. Yeah. So, more or less, kano yung ano yung pagkaka pagkaka structure naman. It's more like a parang parang meron kayong um, fighter rogue and uh, uh, I guess mage, di ba? In terms of like um, in terms, kasi juggernaut brings really heavy damage. Um, uh, with with, uh, with 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 the right. skills, so yeah. parang ganun, uh, we're trying to um, we have more classes down the line, naman. Pero uh, I think also oh, it's not like jotted down to like three. Eventually, you'll get more. Um, okay. Uh, kasi I mean nothing's in stone in stone yet. Pero uh, for for lunch, we're, we're planning to have the, these three. Tapos um, each each of the class each, each of the classes right now have two subclasses based on based on the element that you choose for them, diba? So the marksman has a uh, Wind and Lightning, tapos the Asian right. has Ice and Shadow, uh, the Juggernaut has Fire and Water. So somewhere down the line, we, we plan to expand more, more, more of those elements. So uh, hopefully by launch, may take at least three naman sila each. Okay. Uh, before we move, start moving into other classes, then, para ma, ano, mas ma -levels. So we felt that out of the six that were initially con conceptualized, uh, parang itong tatlong to yung pinakamadaling ano, yung madaling pick up ng mga tao. Tapos pag, I guess, pag mas malaki fan base, we can start getting into Right. <laughs> the weirder ones, diba? Parang nung mga ilimit ka agad yung mga tao. But, uh, I, I guess, you know, I, that's the game plan, I think. That's right. That's actually pretty cool. Um, you, Where is the platforms for Project Zata at this moment? Uh, platform, as in... Uh, Just Steam? Are we talking about, about Steam? Yeah. Not, not, not Steam. You will have your own launcher, no, I'm no, assuming. No, no, no. Or what? Like, that's like naming to other products, diba? I mean, kung yeah. launcher pa kami. So, uh, close beta this, this November. Um, it's, it's through Steam. It's by Steam, so um, we're already um, uh, on the finishing touches of, uh, of our server server build and Steam integration. So uh, after that's done, we could uh, we just have to run a few more tests. Then the game will go live. Uh, we post it on Facebook. Kung, uh, Somewhere around November of 2017. Yeah, November, November 2017. November, yeah. It, it says so in the, in the yeah, yeah. So yeah, November. Uh, we've already given out uh, close beta keys to people on regular uh, it's uh say yes yes so for sure okay so, so what we played today was like the the arena mode right like, yeah uh, and, um, are we are we looking at like other game modes down the line as the as development progresses or are we will, will there be more to be placed later um yeah so um 
Actually, right now we have uh, we have four game modes right now. But uh, for the floor show, uh, experience because I mean, for, uh, our experience with PGF is uh, when people line up and just play it for once, they usually don't have time to learn learn the skills, the classes, the weapons, yeah. uh, and as well as the game mode all at the same time. So uh, people just want to like shoot their opponents, especially if they're just, they're just going to try it once. So back in PGF, people were really confused with the control. So uh, for this for ESGS this year, we opted to just keep team that much, uh, skirmish team that much, you know, um, for the floor show. Tapos pagdating uh, on the tournament, we we put in the other game modes because it's more the it's more the more serious players will be playing in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, they have their time to think about. They, actually, we spot them we spot them around uh, uh, on, the, on the sides of the booth, uh, watching the other players ready formulating strategies and stuff like that. So that's, yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, they're, <laughs> uh, they're, they're, we should be doing that. They're pretty hardcore that way. So um, I think we, we reserve those modes for them. But right now we have um, skirmish, which is a uh, team that match. You just kill your enemies for points. Um, control is a variant of that where there are three control points on the map. If your team captures a control point, it adds a score multiplier to your to your kills. So it's really a matter of um, splitting your team and trying to maintain that you have uh, so there's two control points. So that you have at least two before you start team fights. Because um, if you only have one, obviously um, if the enemy kills your your team your teammates, that that's a bigger score for, score for them than it is for you guys to, to kill them. So. Um, You'll be at a disadvantage if you start team fights with less control points. So it's yeah. more about balancing that kind of split. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think in the tournament, um, yeah, we saw this in the tournament that um, the one the teams that do really well in control are those who can are those who can like multitask. They can split their teams up. Um, so one one can capture uh, one, one uh, a few members can capture team uh, could capture control points while the others you know just really good at shooting, they just try to wipe out the enemy team and you know, defend points or you know, intercept them while they're trying to capture yours. Um, the new game mode that we added um, is called Corruption. Right. So basically, um, when uh, you kill your enemy, that's one point, right. but they also uh, drop a Corruption Shard. Uh, picking up that Corruption Shard will also yield one point for your team. But uh, the, the, trick, the trick here is to, uh, um, to deny the enemies uh, the corruption shards when they kill your teammates. So when your teammate dies and he drops the corruption shard, you can also pick that up so to deny, in order to deny the enemy additional points. So unlike, uh, unlike control where it rewards um, uh, a good team composition where you, where you could get a split, um, corruption rewards sticking together and fighting as a team because um, you know, um, if, your, if your teammate is down, you could instantly pick, pick, up, uh, pick up the shards to, to deny points instead of um, people running off on their own, you know, they die. And you know that's automatically two points for the enemy because no one's there to deny their shard. So yeah. Um, but for the finals later, we'll be having uh, annihilation. So basically, for annihilation, it's um, response are off. Okay. So it's basically, you have to wipe out the other team, and you each each team gets five revives. So is that the that one? Is that going to be the standard like? Moving forward as a competitive game, um, that's yeah, gonna be the mode, or yeah, it's gonna we're be. We're looking, we're looking at uh, annihilation as uh, as a competitive mode. Um, we are planning to have like uh, at some some somewhere down the line, we are planning to have a quick play playlist as well as a competitive playlist. So quick play would be um, skirmish, uh, control and corruption. Then for com for competitive, we'll have uh, annihilation and some of the other modes that we have planned. But uh, no word on those yet. Uh, we're still, you know, um, the drawing board is kind of. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to the, the tournament, you have a tournament this year. Um, how many have registered, actually? Uh, six teams registered. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, the first, the first, uh, the first, uh, what do you call that? Tier in the bracket yeah. is uh, was skirmish. Then we had uh, corruption for semifinals and the battle for third uh, later at 3 p.m. and uh, the, the finals would be annihilation. All right, cool. Uh, um, in a nutshell, like moving on to the, f um, if you have a ballpark figure uh, on release. Uh, maybe an idea of how many maps, um, how many maps, how many game modes, and probably an idea of the progression for people playing the game. Okay, so um, we really want to launch with at least five maps. Oh, with five. Okay. Uh, yeah. So right now we have two. Uh, we have one in development. Uh, uh, we were supposed to unveil it, but the art's not really really done yet for for that map. 
So uh, we're going to push it back to some one of one of the close betas. We'll probably launch it in one of those. Uh, but yeah, we are, we are looking for five, uh, at least five for, uh, for launch. Um, what else? Uh, as far as progression goes, uh, we really want. Um, we, uh, um, of course, it's a hard thing to. Uh, Kind of, kind of a broad topic to discuss because we really want to have a product that we can keep on updating and p players could keep playing and we want to, want to keep it fresh. So um, we want our metas to revolve not around the, like uh, characters or uh, you know not 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 around the characters too much, but more on more on the weapons that you get. So okay. um, the current loadout right now that's going to be pretty much the base of what's. What's going to be available? Yeah, what's going to be available? But at some point, we will be implementing an inventory system where you could get, like, uh, you know, aside from skins, uh, cosmetic armor, you know, uh, and other other vanity items. And we're gonna see like kind of a loot box system. Yeah, we're, we're, pro we're definitely gonna have a reward system uh, for 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 the matches. We we'll will we'll be having loot boxes as well as um, you know premium skins because uh, it's lots of. Lots of lots of people in the studio, lots of artists in the studio really want to like, design their own stuff, right. and you know we can. Uh, <laughs> There's uh, always that one guy that wants to play fashion, you yeah, know, the fashion yeah. game. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we want to. Yeah, I think it's a good way to capitalize because um, it's it's hard to keep doing a product that you know that you know um, microtransactions will just right. will, will boost your stats. You know? So we're trying to keep the 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 payable items to cosmetics. And you know additional yeah, right. additional loot boxes like what, what 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 other games are doing right now, you know they just give you additional chances to get more more of the random drops. So so with that in mind, this could be a free to play game, uh, or what? No, um, we're definitely looking at it to be affordable, uh, very 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 affordable, especially in the Philippines. I mean, uh, Steam allows us to to have different prices per region, but really we really want the Philippines to be our home base in terms of the player base of the game. Um, you know, so no free to play. There's going to be a fixed price towards the end. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, but uh, I think um, not, not, not sure if you could already quote me on that. But you know, right. we're still uh, we're still in talks with the marketing and business. You know, I've, I've pretty much just programmed the game. But <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, that's good. Um, so, yeah. With release date, like uh, you have a question? I actually have one one, one more question. Uh, I just want to ask like. One of the things I noticed right away when looking through the game's UI was that there's a very full-bodied lore in place. Like you look at the guns, and they all have oh, stories, yeah. and all the all characters have stories in them. Like, like uh, does that come into play in the entire like design of the game? That there's supposed to be a, a narrative context for everything. Um, actually, when the game, well, when I started conceptualizing the game, there was it really was uh, supposed to be a cooperative campaign of some sort. But uh, at some point we. We saw the we saw the esports scene. It's, it figured that you know, um, makes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really it's really uh, it's really on the rise, and so we decided to focus on the. Uh, well, actually, uh, one of our partners from uh, from the US actually said that you know it's really difficult to start uh, a new in, a new intellectual property and you know do both. We really need to focus on one. So yeah, uh, and uh, well, esports was more in more in line with our goal. You know, just uh, multiplayer competitive. So, uh, but but the original concept really had a, a, a co-op. Yeah, uh, yeah, a co-op with the lore and backstory. Um, one of our actually surprisingly one of our more popular posts on the Facebook pa Facebook page was not really about uh, the gameplay, but was about uh, sh short background lore about what what the background of the game is. So, uh, so it's it's safe to say that uh, we can see some kind of form of lore or other content besides the competitive scene yeah. there in the future. Yeah, in the future. Uh, oh, I hope it gets to that point. Uh, yeah, if, yeah. if it's successful, um, we have... It can be a possibility. Yeah, yeah, we have lots of cooperative game modes in plan. So, uh, you know, just to do fun stuff with your friends, aside from, you know, sh shooting each other, which is also fun. But, you know, sometimes you just want to not antagonize each other, work together, you know. Um, hopefully you can get to that phase. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Well, there. Well, that's cool. It's projects and that. Uh, um, again, close beta. On November, yeah. Uh, just look at, just head over to the Facebook to check out more details and a release window, an idea of when it's fully going to be out. Uh, Do you have, can you say that? I think this marketing says it's like uh, second or third quarter next year, but yeah, um, that's for uh, that's for the full release. But um, for close beta, it's this November. Uh, we plan to have a sh uh, other smaller close betas before going into full open beta. Because okay. we really need, really, really need to test the servers first, you know, before opening it to the public. And right. Make sure nothing. Make sure it can handle the kind of volume we're trying to get. 
uh, we're going to try to get feedback in close beta to see what kind of volume we're expecting because you know, on the technical side it's pretty hard to plan yeah uh, right planning for like uh, 2,000 players is different very very different from planning to 200,000 and 200 million that's really yeah, that's a whole different ballpark yeah, yeah I know that's pretty cool though we, we played Project Zendata it's pretty awesome go check it out go check their Facebook uh, is there any way like people who are not in ESG any way to get to the, to the close beta how do they get into that uh, <laughs> is there a way or is it really an ESGS exclusive kind of deal it's a, right now it's pretty much an ESGS exclusive kind of deal um, apparently because Steam has a new policy they're, they're trying to cut down on people who you know they give out Steam keys so they really put a limit on us on how many keys we could give away. So uh, right now we prioritize the people who are in the ESGS floor show, right. as well as the uh, media partners, you know, uh, people who, who probably want to stream and stuff like that. But we will be, once we once you use those up, we could start with the next batch. We could order the next batch of keys from Steam. Then. Well, there, because uh, we got a Steam code, so uh, we got a code, so check out our gameplay footage for sure, if ever. <laughs> but yeah, thanks, uh, Gene Gacho, for your time. and. Yeah, Project Zentata, ESGS 2017, pretty cool stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.